Hi, I'm Jim Wilson. Welcome to my program on field trim diagnostics. We're going to teach you how to use field trim as a diagnostic tool. This is the most common problem technicians have in the shop. How to use field trim, how to diagnose it, what it is and how it works. We're going to teach you how to use this to diagnose sensor inputs like the O2 sensor, the mass airflow sensor. In addition, we're going to be able to use fuel trim as a diagnostic tool to know when we need to do a fuel system service. We can do it before and after to see if we've done major changes to the car to restore it back to the original operating condition. Restore that lost gas mileage that customers are complaining right now or that loss of power that you might run into. Now let's get on with the program. Now let's get started by looking at fuel trim. What we have to remember is fuel trim is based on O2 sensor input. And I ask this a lot of times in class, what should the O2 sensor input be? And they'll tell me it's 450 millivolts. Well, that's great, except that the catalytic converter on a car works at 450 millivolts as the middle, and that's 14.7 to 1. You've, one part of your catalytic converter works at 14.7 to 1 and richer, and that gets rid of the knocks. The other part of your catalytic converter works at 14.7 to 1 and leaner, and that gets rid of your HC and CO. So you have two different beds of your catalytic converter, and they're doing two different jobs. Part of the time you have to go slightly rich, and part of the time you have to go slightly lean. So what you're looking at on your O2 sensor, it's a switching above 800 millivolts and below 200 millivolts, and averaging about 450 millivolts. This is for a proper operating system. Now, the other thing we have to look at while we're here is that we have two different fuel trims related on the vehicle. One is short-term fuel trim. Short-term fuel trim is the ability to change the injector pulse width based off of O2 sensor input. Now, short-term is a system that is working constantly. It's going to be constantly changing, reacting to the O2 sensor input. If the O2 sensor stays high, you're going to see your short-term fuel trim try to take away fuel, which will reduce the injector pulse width to try to create a little bit leaner situation. Now, that's the first one we've got, a short-term fuel trim. And when you turn the key off on short-term fuel trim, it goes away. It only works when you get in the closed loop and you're working in it, it reacts great directly to your O2 sensor input. Now, we have long-term fuel trim. Long-term fuel trim basically is ability of the computer to memorize a lean condition or a rich condition on the vehicle. When it does that, the computer will go in and change the base pulse width. Now, I didn't start talking about base pulse width, but when you turn the key on, the computer and the maps inside the computer set the base pulse width of what this car should be at that particular altitude or that particular temperature. Now, when the car gets in closed loop, what's going to happen is you're going to have a base pulse width that it should be in those conditions. What the computer does, notices what they are, and if the car is running rich or lean, it will add or subtract fuel from that base pulse width to get the system working properly. And the whole idea of this is to get the short-term fuel trim to cross zero and to average 450 millivolts. If it does this, the system is working properly. The problem a lot of technicians have is they don't realize that you have to average 450 millivolts. They think you have to stay at that point. Again, O2 sensor has to go above 800 millivolts and below 200 millivolts for a proper operating system, and the fuel trim should be within 10% of the middle. So we have, on older cars, it was block learn integrator. Integrator is usually 128, and block learn is 128. When you shut the key off on an old General Motors, it forgot what was going on, and it started fresh every time it fired up. On the newer systems, on OBD2, we use zero as a middle, which means zero means no change needed or no uh, modification of the pulse width needed. It means it's working properly. And we have a little window in there. We like it to be between minus 10 and plus 10. If you do that, the system's working okay, and you have a good working system. Now, there's one other thing you need to learn, and that is on some cri older Chrysler cars, we have a thing called additive pulse width, which means that idle, the added fuel, or they took away fuel to correct an idle condition, a lean or rich condition of idle. Volkswagens also do the same thing. They have an additive and a multiple factor. The additive factor will take away fuel at idle. That's going to be your block learn. I think it's 32 that you're going to look at in your block and using that process. Again, additive is going to be for idle. Multiple is going to be for off idle. So that's another thing you're going to be looking at on fuel, fuel trim. Most vehicles, we're only going to be looking at long-term and short-term fuel trim. And you remember, you got two banks. Both banks should be pretty close to each other for the car to be running properly. 